The border city has seen an increase in vandalism over the past couple of weeks. This according to RCMP. Now from shot out vehicle windows to graffiti, many are left with cleaning up a mess. Now we sat down with Staff Sergeant Suki Manch to discuss the matter further in this edition of RCMP Monthly. Well, thank you very much for joining us. So we just want to try and get to it. Over the last couple of weeks, you guys are seeing an increase in property crime here in the border city. Yes, uh, we've seen an increase in mischief, which is categorized as property crime. We had a very high spike uh, over the weekend um, starting last week. Okay, so one of the bigger issues that we are dealing with or that RCMP are dealing with is um, uh, pellet gun being used to shoot out several windows. So I know more than um, or a couple dozen vehicles were targeted over the last week or so. Do we have any leads or anything that's going in on that case? We, um, over the last several days, we did have uh, a large amount of uh, m mischief to windows, mostly parked cars. Um, we do have some leads. People are calling in and providing um, information on possible suspects. Our investigators are looking into places where these types of things are sold. So we're reviewing that material. It takes time. But the main uh, thing is that we're looking for the public to help assist if they know anything. And usually in these cases, the public knows. Someone out there will know who's done this and can provide information to us. Okay, and so we had the shootout windows that you guys are dealing with, but there's also been a spike in graffiti, yeah. people tagging different properties. So I know some of the footage we got, um, there was a shot of a suspect outside of a uh, local elementary school. Uh, your notes in the same tags at Parkades, at the mall. Um, even your RCMP, your new RCMP building got yes, tagged. Yes, um, unfortunately it did, but um, we did have a protective sealant on our walls that helps uh, with these kind of things. Uh, what we find is... Individuals will go on a bit of a spree uh, for whatever reason and they'll do uh, as much damage as they can in, in a, a spurt. Uh, in this case, we had an individual that we believe is the same person because of the um, markings and they leave them as a tag. That's their notoriety that they want from, from doing this type of crime. Um, it helps us because then it helps us focus on, on who we're looking for. And, and there are people, there are specialists and analysts out there that we can uh, go to that uh, track these kind of things and once these people are in, uh, identified somewhere else uh, we can tap into that information so that's what we're looking at and we're again we're looking for the public I have to reiterate that the police are, are just one arm of, of public safety for the community uh, the members of the community are our eyes and ears and if we can get them to uh, provide us with that information whether it be anonymously or through Crime Stoppers or if they come forward and tell us, uh, you know, any small little bit of information can help us. Uh, what's the number that they can contact? They call the non-emergency line. Uh, it'll be changing soon. I don't know the new number, but it's 306-825-6350. Well, it's time once again to take a look inside our new cap vault for some stories from our past and retrospect this week from the archives. Now this week we reveal a discrepancy as to where the actual border is in the border city. But first we go back to a report of progress threatening to remove some local residents. It's October 1992 and a downtown road plan clashes with area homeowners. Traffic, 50th Avenue, downtown Lloydminster. Some say it's too congested. There is a long-range plan to deal with the problem. City Council plans to redevelop streets in the downtown core to make traffic one-way southbound on 50th Avenue and one-way northbound on 49th. But for the plan to work, several homes in this area just south of 44th Street and north of 41st will have to be torn down. This man's home is one on the list slated for demolition. You know, I've lived here all my life and this is my home and I don't like to see <laughs> things kind of over, overrun with uh, progress. But council members say there will be progress when it will happen hasn't been determined. Karen Eisler, NewsHour. This week in 2005, we discover a borderline inaccuracy. They've towered over downtown Lloydminster for many years, symbolizing the provincial border. But are the red tourist markers separating Alberta and Saskatchewan correctly placed? The Forest Meridian was established in the 1880s as part of the township system that marked out all of Western Canada. 
Kevin Beatty has been a licensed surveyor for over two decades. He says old township equipment used years ago to determine the 4th Meridian, where the border currently is, should actually be 300 meters east, near 47th Avenue. Now as it stands right now, the border will not move at all. Government officials say there's no real need and it would be too costly. So the red markers will remain where they are in the border city. Jonathan Glasgow, Newcap News. Join us next time when we preview the progress of Lloydminster's new leisure centre on Retrospect, this week from the Archive. You know what? Today is actually Matt Schumann's birthday, so a happy birthday, oh, Matt. Thank you. And if birthday. anyone has any pythons, maybe we can get you a massage for your birthday. It's a bucket list thing, not a birthday <laughs> present. <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>